there. Now we're gonna do four examples of limits at infinity. So here we have the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the minus three over x. To do this problem, I'm gonna look at the exponent by itself. So I'm gonna write the limit as x goes to infinity of minus three over x. Now, what happens here? Well, uh, the numerator is negative three, but the denominator is getting larger and larger and larger, making this fraction smaller and smaller. So this is zero. In fact, we could say if we set y equal to a negative three over x, we could say that y goes to zero. Now it goes to zero from the left because this is negative as x gets larger as x goes to infinity. Aha, and now what we can do is we can rewrite this as the limit as y goes to zero from the left of e to the y, and this e, e, to, the, e to the y is continuous, so this is equal to e to the zero, which is equal to one. Done. Next example. Here we have the limit as x goes to infinity of sine of pi x all over two. This problem's a little different than the ones we've seen before it. Um, for one thing, I I'm just gonna tell you what the answer is. This limit does not exist. And the question is why? Well, um, what if we set x equal to uh, one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11, and so on. Basically odd numbers. What happens to the value of this function? Well, um, sine of pi over two is one. Sine of three pi over two is negative one. Sine of five pi over two is one. Sine of seven pi over two is negative one. Sine of uh, nine pi over two is one, sine of 11 pi over two is negative one, and so on. So we're alternating between one and negative one, and it doesn't really matter how large x gets. So for this limit to exist, what really has to happen is this, the value of this function needs to settle down as x becomes very large. And as we can see, it is not settling down at all. It is oscillating between one and negative one. So the limit does not exist. Done. Next example. All right, to do this example, it's the limit as x goes to infinity of three x squared minus one all over two x cubed plus five x plus four. What we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by one over, and what we do is we, we pick the, basically the highest power of x that we sort of see. And so it's gonna be one over x cubed all over one over x cubed. And then we, we this is basically multiplying by one, and we, uh, we see what happens. So this is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity. Well, let's look at the numerator here. So this is going to be uh, three over x minus one over x cubed. And in the denominator, we have two plus five over x squared plus four over x cubed. Okay, so now as x goes to infinity, uh, this term goes to zero, this term goes to zero, this is two, this goes to zero. So this is going to be equal to uh, zero over two, which is simply zero. The llama says, done. Next example. In this example, we have the limit as x goes to negative infinity of three x plus four all over the square root of two x squared minus four x plus one. All right, so we're looking for, basically we're gonna multiply by the, by one over sort of the highest power of x we see. And you might say, okay, well I see x squared here. Yes, but it's underneath the square root. So we should be multiplying by one over x is what we should be multiplying by. And there's another little hiccup in this problem here. Um, notice we're going to negative 
infinity. So if we're going to negative infinity, then, then this is a negative, this one over x is a negative number. So we really, we should make these both positive. And so it's minus one over x and min over minus one over x. Now, let's see what happens. Um, as we do this, we're going to, this is going to equal, well, uh, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of, well, uh, in our first term, we're going to have negative 3 minus 4 over x. Uh-huh, that looks good. And now when we put this minus 1 over x, remember, this is a positive number here. This is a positive number, despite the fact there's a minus sign there. It's going to go right into our, into our radical sign, but when we put it inside the radical sign, it's going to be squared. So um, we're going to have radical, and when I square this positive number, I'm going to get uh, 2x squared over x squared minus 4 over uh, x plus 1 over x squared. All right, so now what happens? Well, now we take the limit as x goes to negative infinity. This thing goes to 0. This term goes to 2. This term goes to 0. This term goes to 0. So it's equal to the limit uh, as x goes to negative infinity of minus 3 all over the square root of 2, which is just equal to minus 3 over the square root of 2. Done. We're all done with these four examples of limits at infinity. Let's go do some more math.